Greetings from the far side of the galaxy, I'm Fury, finally able to do one of these videos again. The Samos got a new event and that's easy content, so let's dive right on into it. Finally, after getting snubbed in the Nightmare in Ueno event, Leap finally gets the attention he deserves. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't do this. Very nice, much jiggle. He's based on a myth from the Sami people located in northern Scandinavia. Their religion was animistic and Libo Mai was the spirit of alder trees. He supposedly gave them good fortune and protected them from bears while hunting. I have an entire video on the guy if you're interested in learning more. Clicky clicky linky linky. He's the advisor for the Ueno Guild, the Beast Tamers, although you'd mistake him for the Guildmaster since he's the only one that actually gets stuff done. Which is quite weird that they call him lazy, because I don't want to disagree with the source material, but we see in the AR card that Lieb is always busy. He just always overworks himself and then shifts some of that infinite workload onto others. According to his research file, Lieb never actually wanted to get into this mess. It's only because one of the junior tamers asked for help that Lieb got off his rather large ass to go to the beach. The research file also briefly mentions Lieb's problems with rules and roles and how they're assigned outside of their owner's will, indicative of his sacred artifact. It has the power to force wounds onto others. Back in Lieb's home world, it was his job to decide who lived and who died. Perhaps roles will play a role in the event's story. His unit is 5 stars, fire attribute, and bow type, and it's titled The Summer Buddy and The Summer Shade. This is the one unit I didn't get from the banner, and after all the shit I had to spend to get Hecate, I'm entirely okay with that. His first skill is Summer Daylight. If stationary with over 50% HP, he gives up to 800 HP to allies in one square at 80%. And if he has up to 20% HP, he gets up to 80 CP at 90% and removes all debuffs at 80%. The second skill, Rescue Explorer, applies Reflect Debuff to himself and in one square at phase start and gives Gut Strengthening to himself and the entire board. And when appearing, he applies Guts to every ally just because he's a really nice guy. The third skill is Pushy Polar Bear. If stationary with over 20% HP, he applies Archer and Arousal to allies in one square at 80 and 70% respectively. He's also immune to Bind, Skill Lock, and Double Lock. His final skill is Life and Death Chooser, a reference to his role. At phase start, he gets Concentration. If he has over 50% HP, he gets Vigor and Tenacity to himself and allies in one square around himself at 80 and 90%. And at turn start, if his HP is greater than 1%, he gets up to 1500 HP to himself. Overall, great art, subpar unit. Considering his HP gimmick, his sheer lack of defensive buffs does not help. That final skill seems useful until you remember he has like 7,000 HP when leveled up. It just can't carry Lieb's weight. The main difference between Lieb and some of the best units in the game are that they're self-sufficient. Like, Hot Springs Horku is so good because he doesn't need a team for his burn gimmick to work. But Lieb needs a team to stay useful. Yes, he has some of the best buffs in the game, but you won't get them for long when he's just a sitting duck. He works well with c -Pack Lee, who can bait away attacks, and Hecate, who can heal some of the damage. Next up, we have the Booger Man. He's, of course, based on the very popular folktale of the same name. The idea of a boogeyman, a mythical monster who punishes children for misbehaving, actually appears across many cultures. Some I find cool are Hombre de Saco, the Sack Man from Spanish America, the Master of Midnight from Haiti, and Der Schwarzman, the... Ugh, the Black Man from Germany. The name's not actually racist, rather it refers to the monster's preference for hiding in dark places. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention his really cute AR card he has with Zurong making chocolates. Now we just need Zurong to have AR cards with his other dads. Baking a pie with Horku Kamui, stuffing a turkey with some Mork, framing a bystander with Daikoku. 
Boogeyman's research file is fairly light on information. It basically says that after coming to Tokyo, he learned that there are many kinds of horror, such as cosmic, gothic, etc. And now, Boogeyman is exploring the possibility of him shifting from actual horror to entertainment horror. There's also a brief mention of his pupil, which I assume is wrong. Boogeyman's unit is 5 stars, water attribute, and 1 type, and it's titled The Midsummer Nightmare. Call me crazy, but due to the events theming around plays, I think that title is a reference to the Shakespeare play A Midsummer Night's Dream. His first skill is Seeker of Horror. He deals double damage against fear and applies Berserk Plus to himself. His second skill, Chainsaw User in Summer Clothes. Oh, so that explains this art. He applies stigma in a three square vertical line, two squares ahead of himself, and fear to enemies in shot range at 90%. And after getting hit, he has a 20% chance to remove a debuff. His third skill probably translates into something like Roll of the Forest Cutter or something like that. At face start, he applies evasion to himself and before being hit, he applies limit to himself both at 80% and nourishment to adjacent allies at 60%. The final skill is Traumatist, a funny play on the word Dramatist, which is basically an actor or anyone involved in thespian activities. He's immune to fear, ignores every defense boosting status, and applies countdown weakening to every enemy at face start. Overall, he's a unit that's just shy of being top tier. He has a lot of good stuff, Berserk Plus, Limit, and Damage Boost against all defensive buffs. But just like Lieb, he's missing that final oomph to put him with the heavy hitters like Hot Springs Horku and Pool Party Heracles. All he need is a damage boost against Stigma or some way to generate lots of CP to get off his CS skill for the countdown. He's a better version of Shulatil's limited unit, same gimmick but he has more broad effectiveness. He does work really well with Shino's 5 stars since he can take advantage of that countdown weakening. With the 5 stars done, let's get to the new guy, c Lee. Those of you who've paid attention to Asamo's lore may recognize this name. Remember the story of Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl? How they fought a sea monster and Tez lost his leg? Well, that was this guy. His Aztec mythology is very similar to what we know in game. They, their gender is unspecified in the myths, were a primordial sea monster. Part crocodile, part fish, and part toad with a mouth on every joint. I swear, if this devolves into Vor, I'm gonna be pissed. Using his leg as a lure, Tez fished for the beast and ended up losing it to them. Ah, oh, goddammit, I knew this was gonna be Vor. They also ate his foot, so I guess this is also feet stuff. Gross. Him and Ketz did eventually kill the beast and promptly used its body to create the world, which is pretty much exactly how it went in Asamo. Getting to his research file, we know that Seapak Lee is very close to the entertainers, literally living in their basement. Dude was probably banging on the ceiling the entirety of chapter 14, asking if they could fight the exception any louder. He's one of the entertainers' lead actors, having roles in both of their productions of Phantom of the Opera and Beauty of the Beast. He's also into tokusatsu, but feels sad that he always has to play the monster. His 4 stars research file is probably the most meaty of the entire event. His artifact, much like the mythological self, are an array of mouths that appear on his joints. Their ability is to consume everything, but rather than turning it into energy like Behemoth, he puts it back out as nourishment. And that's why the entertainer's basement is a lot like his butt. Lush, bountiful, and ready for seed to be sown. He had a habit of singing in that lonesome basement, but Bigfoot and Christine always appeared out of nowhere to give him an applause. Now, c Lee is beginning to wonder if he wants a bigger audience. Moving on to his unit, we're only covering 4 stars and up by the way, c Lee is 4 stars, none type, and infinity attribute. His first kill is either a radiator or one who showers. That's how you can tell Life Winners was at Anthrocon. When appearing, he gets taunt to himself and taunt strengthening and weapon change to shot after moving. His next skill is Pioneer of Circular Theory. The idea that the reciprocant of an action will repeat and relay the action to another reciprocant at a greater intensity, thus enhancing the feelings of the original actor. 
On miss, he applies regen to allies in one square, evasion in front and behind himself at 80%, and gains up to 800 HP on miss at 90% and is immune to fear. The third skill is Devourer. After moving, he gets rage to himself but always removes it on his opponent's turn and removes up to 1000 HP to enemies that hit him. His final skill is Big Monster Actor, but it probably translates into Kaiju Actor. Before being hit, he applies Archer to himself at 50%, after attacking, he gets up to 16 CP at 80% and deals extra damage against burn. I don't know what with Life Wonder's recent habit of giving limited units taunt, but this is probably the best taunt unit so far. He gets taunt strengthening to boost his defense alongside regen. He even gets rage resistance specifically before enemies attack so it doesn't lower his defense. He's incredibly good as a generic unit, he's able to draw away fire and actually take the hits. If you want to build a team around him, you can put him with glass cannons like Hirito or with units that specialize against burn like Horku Kamui or Taratomo. We're about halfway-ish through the video, so let me ask that you please like and subscribe, donate to my Kofi and Patreon, and check out my live streams on Mondays and Fridays. The next dude is the one with the funny name, Fergus Macroish. He comes from a popular Irish myth, the Ulster Cycle. Fergus was renowned for his heroism and, uh, manly vigor to the point that his name means manliness or son of a great stallion. He's tricked out of kingship, but it doesn't really matter since he marries the queen and gets his throne back. There's other parts to his story, including his exile and the world's dumbest death, but I have to get on with this video. He's not a part of any guild regularly, but this specific variant is an entertainer. He joined the guild to grow as a person, to learn something that surpasses his two-sword style. I know there's a One Piece joke in there somewhere, but I can't figure it out for the life of me. It also mentions how he channels his natural literary skills into his performances, a reference to the fact that he comes from a book. The most important thing the research file mentions is that he possesses a pillar artifact which is able to hold memories inside of it. However, his sword does have two handles, meaning it's a power he can share with his guildmaster. Very sussy indeed, Fergie boy. Very sussy wussy indeed. Anyways, it's unit time. Macroish's is 4 stars, wood attribute, and bow type. It's titled The Dual Wielding Summer Actor. Whoa, he's bisexual. I didn't know that. By the way, I'm bisexual. <laughs> That's a fun bit of Japanese slang for you. The word for dual wielding is also a euphemism for bisexual. His first skill is Midsummer Youth Actor. He gets combo when appearing and on turns by 2 at 90% and a 90% chance for Vigor at phase start. His next skill is Double Face, which I'm like 90% sure is also the name of a Pokemon move. When appearing, he gets Dazzle Strengthening. After being hit, he duplicates the hit unit's buffs and removes one of theirs at 80% while getting Anchor at phase start at 90%. The third skill is Map Spreader. I can only assume that map is slang for legs. When appearing, he gets adamantine to himself and up to 800 HP when being debuffed at 80%. His final skill is Captain of the Hidden Expedition. Before hitting, he applies weakness to hit units and enemies to the left and right at 70%. At phase start, if his HP is full, he spreads buffs directly to adjacent allies and after hitting applies crit plus in the same range at 20%. Macroish is honestly a freakishly good unit for a 4 star. He has great damage and combo to make it even better alongside the ability to not only remove buffs but also spread them. He's one of the few units in the game that can actually give combo. The only thing he can do is give himself Dazzle, but that honestly doesn't really matter. And now we're at the one I've been awaiting most. It appears Life Funders heard my prayers, cause Hecate's finally moved her damn arms. I'd be remiss if I didn't at least do this. Very nice. Much jiggle. Hecate's based on the Greek goddess of the same name. Originally a goddess of the moon and boundaries, her association with such gave her another association with the underworld. And from there, she got her association with witches. A cool fun fact I did come across is that her Roman name is Trivia, literally meaning three ways, a reference to the goddess having three faces. 
Hecate's research file tells us a little more about her past in Olympus. How she would despise the summer months since it only served to remind her of her chronic loneliness. That's right, your BBW queen is canonically a fanfic writing femcel. However, here in Tokyo, she's now finding that her frigid femcel heart is heating up. Maybe she will find love someday. Her unit is 4 stars, long slash type, either attribute and called lit by the summer light. Her first skill is push cap resupplier, and yeah, I have no idea what that means. Basically, she attracts all enemies on the entire board at phase start at 90%, and makes it so that all your units get up to 300 HP and 10 CP to the ally to the left when attacking. Her second skill is arms folded behind her back. Before hitting, she gives up to 300 HP to allies and two squares to the left and right. After moving, she gives crit plus to allies in front of her and has increased vertical movement. Her third skill is guest performer at the summer event. At phase start, she applies glint to herself and applies glint to herself on miss at 70%. And when appearing, she also gets glint strengthening. Her final skill is Exploring Witch. At phase start, she applies increased HP for enemies when leaving to enemies on the board, basically making it so that every defeated enemy heals your team for up to 1000 HP, and applies prayer to allies in front and protection to allies on her left and right at 80%. Honestly, she's a pretty good healing unit, mostly due to that final skill. If you can keep the damage up and keep enemies dying, she'll keep your team topped off. This makes her a pretty good partner for glass cannons like Lieb or Kirito while also working well with taunt based units like Sipat Hill. Overall, the biggest winner in this event was definitely Makroish. He has good damage, good defensive buffs, a minor HP heal, and supportive buffs and debuff skills. I would say he's a jack of all trades, master of none, but he's kind of good at all of it. He has his cake and then made it a combo meal. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this video to a close. It's like 7am and my eyes started burning like 2 hours ago. And now it's time for our Patreon shoutouts. For our 3 stars, we have special thanks to 87 Werog, Deku, Zora Chow, Choron, Garon LeFay, Drunken Yara, Anon RC, Lightning Shadow, and Kayun. For 4 stars, we have Miki Moon, The Night of the Wind. For our Super D Tooper special 5 star shoutouts, we have First, Vanilla Flower, The Blue Blur. Then, Poor Mage, The Undefeatable. Next, Sky King 64, The Iblish Trigger. And finally, Mahogasaur, the fastest thing alive. Thank you for watching. Do be sure to like and subscribe. As always, this is Rose Fury signing out.